Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Hey Coach Tony. I'm your host, Tony Fiorino. And as you know, each week here on the show, we like to tackle the hottest topics in youth sports. And we always want to hear what you have to say. So we've opened up the studio lines at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. I want to remind you that our good friends at Catamount Ski Area in the nearby Berkshires have agreed to give us free passes to some of our best callers and guests. So whether you're listening in the car, at home, or even online at heycoachtony.com, make sure to chime in on the studio lines at 855-HEY-COACH. And let's see if you can win some free day passes to Catamount Ski Area. Well, um, you know what? I want to address something that I, I wasn't going to, but I want to. It's, and it, it, a lot of what I've been reading about Joe Paterno. Actually, I want to ask a question to all the, the Paterno supporters who have gone off the deep end and are talking about how the administration at PSU should rot in hell. <clears throat> Here's a question I got. And we're going to touch on Paterno quickly, but we'll take your calls if you have any. If... Here's the question I have that no one's been able to answer yet. If you knew of a person, forget about Joe Paterno, forget about Penn State. If you knew about a person who could have stopped the assault and torture of 10-year-old boys and didn't, and then after that, your child was raped by this known sex offender, let me ask you this. Would you suggest that the person who did not come forward should have an eternal place in heaven while those who held him accountable belong in hell? Like I said, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on this uh, for the show, batting bit back and forth, but if anyone cares to chime in on the Paterno thing, I'm going to take your calls at 855-HEY-COACH. But my final word, <clears throat> unless it's in reaction to one of your calls, my final word uh, on the whole Paterno and PSU thing is this. Joe Paterno will forever be remembered primarily for two things. One being one of the most influential coaches in the history of all American sport. I'm not going to deny that. And two, he's going to be remembered for standing idly by while children were made to suffer and not doing something he could have done to stop it. If you think you can separate those two things, you are just wrong. But like I said, if you want to talk about it, give me a call in the studio, 855-HEY-COACH. Another thing I found interesting, and uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to pat myself on the back. If you remember, when the, when the whole PSU thing first erupted, um, I was fortunate enough to have our friend Steve from Katona join me on the show. And uh, i got to go back and look at the exact show. But Steve said something along the lines of, now that Paterno is no longer coaching, I wouldn't be surprised if he was going to die within two years. And if memory serves me, I jumped in and I said, Steve, I give him months and uh, this, this goes back to what my wife hates to hear me say. I hate being right all the time. Uh, and I don't want anyone to confuse this with me being pleased with the fact that Paterno is gone, uh, nor do I think that it should take away from what he did as a coach. But uh, like I said, those, that's going to be the last word on this. Um, one other thing I want to get into before we hit the topic of the week. The topic of the week, by the way, is social networking and how it affects our kids and our coaches. <clears throat> but before I get into that... <clears throat> I'm in rant mode a little bit, so let me ask you all to shut up for a second and just listen, because I, I, quite frankly, I'm a little annoyed. I'm annoyed about something that happened after last week's show. If you remember, last week we discussed a tournament that my fifth grade girls played in where a referee decided it was his job to make sure the score stayed close. Well, Mrs. Hey Coach Tony called in. She tried to argue that I was wrong um, to feel that the ref was out of line. Bottom line. 99% of all level-headed men agreed with my position, but as always, there, there, there's that 1% who make you scratch your head and wonder if humanity is truly doomed. So during the week, I got a call from none other than my brother, two of my brothers, Frank and John. They call the show every once in a while. They call and they start giving me grief, telling me that they're taking Mrs. Hey Coach Tony's side of this argument. <clears throat> They're telling me they're only fifth grade girls, winning isn't that important, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what got me peeved is not that they brought up this point. What got me peeved, it's not that I disagree with that statement, but that <laughs> two guys who seemingly have their heads on straight most of the time obviously had their heads buried deep inside their butts on this particular topic. So let me be really clear about this if anyone else has any questions. The point of last week's show had absolutely nothing to do with whether or not fifth grade girls 
should be playing in a competitive tournament or whether or not it's important that fifth grade girls win or lose. The point of last week's show is that the job of a youth official is to call a fair game and to interpret and enforce the rules of the game. Nothing less, nothing more. The problem that arose based on last week's show is that a referee who was the focal point of last week's show decided he believed in a championship game of a tournament where people wrote checks. He believed that he should unfairly call the game in hopes that he would make the score close. This is just plain wrong, no matter how you slice it. Anyone who wants to read more into that is just reaching at straws. However, if you did have something to say about last week's show, I know a couple of you complained <clears throat> on Facebook you didn't get through to the, the studio lines. If you didn't have your chance, um, you know what? You'll have your chance today. While we're talking about our topic, I'll take some of your calls. So remember, studio lines are open at 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. Now, having said that, I like to move forward in life, not move backwards. Something did occur last week, right after the show I got wind of this, and, it, and it's an important topic for all of us as parents and coaches, and, and, and actually even more important for the players. I'm talking, of course, about the impact of social media on the youth sports environment. You know, if i got to speak in normal guy terms, Twitter and Facebook are getting a lot of kids and coaches in trouble. That's it. Uh, kids are misusing Twitter and Facebook. And it's starting to get them in trouble. And as parents and coaches, it's, it's getting to the point where we got to figure out how to protect these kids from themselves. And that's really what this is about. For some reason, they don't get the fact that once they hit that send button or that post button, whatever they may have said or done or posed for in a picture in the heat of the moment or in a moment of stupidity in some cases, is out there for the whole world to see. And once it's out there, you can never, ever take it back. This holds true. Even for professional athletes, we've heard about them all over the place, but it's especially troubling for a kid who may actually throw his or her future in the toilet. In fact, if you didn't hear last week or if you weren't up on the Facebook page at HeyCoachTony.com, there's a kid in New Jersey <clears throat> named Yuri Wright. Yuri is a highly recruited high school football player for Don Bosco Prep, which I believe was the number one t uh, team in the country this year. He has been expelled. Not reprimanded, not suspended. He's been expelled from school for some racially charged and sexually graphic posts that he put up on his Twitter account. Now, joining me to discuss this, because I really just have nothing more than a bunch of passion and emotion on this topic. So joining me to discuss the impact and the potential perils of social networking in high school sports is Mr. Eric Swallow. Eric is a longtime coach. He's currently the athletic director for the South, uh, Southington, Connecticut School District. Eric, good morning. Welcome to Hey Coach Tony. How are you doing? Hey, Tony. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. Um, aside from your day-to-day -day responsibilities, Eric, uh, my understanding is you also deal with many issues surrounding social networking as it affects the state of Connecticut uh, and high school athletics. Do me, do me a favor. Before we get into this, could you please roll out this role that you play and, and what it means? Well, obviously, as a district administrator, and one of my, my main responsibility is, uh, is maintaining a, a, over a 1,000 student-athlete uh, community, and we have to address multiple issues in terms of student accountability, uh, students' actions on and off the field, uh, specifically related to substance abuse. It could be related to what we're going to talk about, uh, social media. That's definitely become a real primary issue, not just in my school district, but I know in, across the state and probably across the country. And this has become a topic of uh, significant concern for the statewide uh, Athletic Directors Association, correct? Oh, very much. Uh, in fact, uh, each year the Connecticut uh, Interscholastic Athletic Conference, uh, they have a uh, two- or three-day uh, seminar. And last year, in fact, uh, the Connecticut Association of, Association of Athletic Directors, CAD, uh, they've sponsored a CEU on social networking. Uh, and what that allowed all the athletic directors in the state of Connecticut to do is to go back to and discuss the topic with their coaching staffs. And uh, I've done that actually uh, for the coaching staff in Southington. I also did it for the coaching staff in Middletown. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's incredible that a lot of us don't understand all the intricacies of the effect of social networking. And as you said, uh, you hit that uh, send button, that's forever. <clears throat> and forever. Uh, the misconception is that it's private. Uh, and we can get into that. Oh, I, I uh, want to get into because that because that's, you know, we got kids burning their draft cards and burning their bras because they think that, it, that 
reposting something they did on Twitter or Facebook is an invasion of privacy, and nothing could be further from the truth. It's correct. It's correct. So uh, it's been a it's been a, a topic that's taken on incredible, you know, uh, more interest, and there's more of. of Oh, uh, so we're looking for more visibility relevant to the whole issue of social networking. No question. Now you heard about the story about Yuri Wright, the kid from Don Bosco Prep. Yeah, he got I did. expelled yeah. <clears throat> for the things that he posted on his Twitter account. Right. How did you first hear about the story? Uh, I received it uh, by way of email, uh, and obviously then it goes out on the national wires. Uh, but there again is a perfect example. And again, student athletes need to understand. You know, from my experience when I coached at the college level. You know, you don't really have a long time to be successful at the college level as a coach. <laughs> you got to get it done in a three to five year window. So you're going to go out and you're going to identify student athletes that go beyond the, the skill set, the physical aspects of their abilities. You got to look at character. You got to look at uh, citizenship. You got to look <clears throat> at those factors because you want to bring good people in that are going to make you successful. You got to have good people around you. And, and with with the, just the, the plethora of talent around this country from major college programs, you got to think that at some point. There are coaches who will stand up and do the right thing and judge some of these kids, not just on their 40, but on whether or not they're drinking a 40 at a party and, and other things that relate to their character. And in, and, in, and, and in reality, what I found interesting was Michigan, which is clearly one of the top programs in the country, had a full scholarship in place for this kid, Yuri Wright. And guess what? When they found out what happened, they revoked his scholarship and immediately stopped recruiting the kid. And... You know, how do you uh, – let's assume it was a less highly recruited kid, and that was his only scholarship offer. Two things could happen. One, all colleges may just say – I don't know if you ever saw the movie All, uh, all the Right Moves with Tom Cruise. Yeah. You, you start getting blackballed, and you know, that could clearly snowball where, kid, where all coaches say, is it worth it? Do I want this to be the next Cam Newton who's going to steal a laptop when he comes to my school <clears throat> in Florida? You know, or – you know, or that could be your only scholarship opportunity, and it's off the table. I mean, how, how do you try to get this through to the kids? Well, it, that's a great point because one of the things that uh, when I address student athletes that have been in a situation of a discipline <clears throat> issue, I, I give them that perspective. I give them that perspective. I said, if you have aspirations to play at the next level, you need to understand that the the, the coaching community is a tight knit small community, more specifically even at the college level because it's in that specific sport. Well, I can tell you that I get calls from college coaches, and they, like I said earlier, they go beyond the, what he can do in the 40 and how high he can jump. Hey, what kind of kid is he? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to not do myself any, any service if I am not forthright and upfront or have any credibility moving forward. So I'm going to give any, any college coach a, a clear perspective of what uh, they might be anticipating in recruiting that student athlete. And that's a positive or negative approach as well. So they don't understand that sometimes. Well, I, I would go so far as to say most of them don't understand it uh, at all any of the time. And, right. and that's unfortunate. So um, to remind you, we're joined by uh, Mr. Eric Swallow, the athletics director at Southington High School. And we're going to be talking throughout the hour about Facebook and Twitter, how it affects the kids, punishments that are taking place. Uh, I'm going to have to go to a quick break, but uh, and we, we will have the studio lines open at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. But I want to remind you before we go to break that we at the Hey Coach Tony Show are very, very proud to announce that this year we're working with the Boomer Esiason Cystic Fibrosis Foundation to sponsor a runner in the New York City Half Marathon for 2012. Uh, a couple of the supporters of the show and sponsors have stepped up uh, to help us. And in return for their support, I want to give you guys some well-deserved recognition. Uh, by the way, if you want to help us with a small donation, just email me more information at heycoachtony at gmail.com. I will also have a link up to the, uh, the donation page for smaller non-corporate uh, sponsorships on heycoachtony.com. So far, I want to say thanks to our friends at sportssignup.com. If you need to automate your league, your, your officials, your, your coaches, your collection, your registrations, and everything in between, make sure to go to www.sportsignup.com. Uh, also, if, uh, if you're in the Riverside section of Greenwich, Connecticut, and you're in the mood for some outstanding Italian, you look no further than Pomodoro Restaurant. It's right off the exit there for uh, US1. Um, outstanding place. I go there all the time. Also want to give a big thank you to the folks at the Outdoor Sports Center of Wilton, Connecticut. Uh, outdoor Sports Center has been fulfilling all your outdoor needs for decades. And um, we also want to recognize our buddies over at Patsy's Pizza on Route 202 in Somers. 
They also jumped on the fundraising bandwagon this week, so special thank you to our friends at Patsy's. Uh, and, of course, it would not be winter without our great friends at Catamount Ski Area chipping in. Located in the lovely Berkshires, Catamount equals winter skiing fun for the whole family. So, again, if you want to learn more about how you can help us uh, support the Boomer Siasin Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and help sponsor our runner in the New York City Half Marathon, just shoot me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com. Please give what you can, folks. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. We'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Tony Fiorino on Hey Coach Tony. I want to remind you that we are on the air every Saturday at 9 a.m. And don't mind reminding you that uh, our target date is February 25th, where we're going to start simulcasting the show live on CPTV Sports throughout the state of Connecticut on several cable systems. So watch your local I, I never thought I would say check your local listings for Hey Coach Tony. <laughs> All right, listen, we're with Eric Swallow in studio today, the athletics director at Southington High School. And uh, during the break, we got sucked into it, man. We started talking about Paterno. And uh, while Coach Eric here has plenty of interesting insights, we had a nice little debate. That's not what the show's about today, but if you missed your chance to talk about Joe Paterno, you can call the studio at 855 Hey Coach. What we're talking about this morning is the effect that social networking is having on the athletic programs in general, whether it be coaches, players, or even parents in some of these cases. question I got for you, Eric, is based on the fact that you've clearly recognized that there's an issue here, I have to assume that you're doing something to deal with it. Are there strict policies and guidelines in place in the Southington School District about the use or misuse of social yeah, networks? Yeah, we do. In fact, I did that last year uh, as a result of just uh, my ex exposure to the whole issue is that we put language into the student-athlete handbook specifically under the Code of Conduct, talking directly about uh, any inappropriate use uh, by any social media mechanism, that be Twitter, Facebook, uh, MySpace, email, whatever, there is consequence. And its consequence is equivalent to whether you're suspended from school uh, or whether there's a substance-related issue outside of school. So uh, we do have language that's written in now in the Student-Athlete Handbook. And that's important because... Uh, and that's shared with uh, the coaches, and that's shared with uh, all student athletes and parents. So, question I got: when you, when you start throwing around terms like inappropriate, you leave yourself open to certain subjectivity. The fact is, what I think, and, and here's why I say this: <clears throat> for those of you who are up on my Facebook page at HeyCoachTony.com, there was a link to the actual tweets that this kid Yuri Wright put out there that he got expelled for. I'll be honest with you. Do I think they were inappropriate? Yeah. Do I think they warranted the kid being expelled from school? In general terms, no. Now, Don Bosco Prep is a Catholic high school, so and a private high school, so they do dance to a to a you know to a different tune. But I got to tell you, I, I really wondered if the kid needed to be expelled for exactly what was written. So, what's inappropriate? Well, I can't speak for other administrations. I know that uh, our administration takes uh, a, a, a very strong stand in terms of any type of cyberbullying. Uh, and that's really one of the bigger issues right now is, uh, is how kids are using uh, social media. And cyberbullying, and it's been addressed by the state of Connecticut with new legislation, in which I know most, I'm sure most of your uh, listeners have, are aware of, is that the whole bullying issue has taken on a whole new uh, dynamic in terms of uh, – awareness, uh, zero tolerance, and that also relates to cyberbullying. So, you know, to, to state specifically what is inappropriate, I think any, any word that is demeaning, and words are very powerful, and, uh, you know, you have to really, you know, measure each case as they're presented to you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, where I am, I know that uh, our administration takes a pretty strong stand against uh, any inappropriate use. You know, and, and one of the things that a lot of people – don't talk about, but this is what well, we did during during one of the breaks. Um, is not so much the issue of privacy, as much as the issue of what I'll just call accountability. You know, like I said, once you put it out there, it's there forever, and you know, it's it's public domain. It lasts forever, and all it takes is one person who wants to save it or print it. Or for those of you who are Facebook savvy, you click that share button. Three people click a share button, and as many as. 5,000 people can see you with a beer bong in your hand yeah. at a party. 
and that's going to get to a college coach at some point. It's going to get to a, uh, you know, the, the head of the PTA or the head of the church choir or whatever it is you do with your spare time. <clears throat> and it just, it, do you find that a lot of people don't understand that there is no invasion of anyone who, if you call, if you want to call the show and talk about invasion of privacy, save your breath because I'm going to shred you. There's no such thing as privacy on the internet. Let's yeah. get it out there. Let's say it now. Do you find people don't just, just don't get that? Oh, uh, significantly, especially recently in the last <laughs> two years, especially with Facebook and with Twitter. Uh, you know, I get, I've been. Uh, made aware of situations where pictures have been posted on Facebook or inappropriate language or dialogue or context, context of, uh, <clears throat> of, um, of statements that were made by student athletes, uh, you know, are, come across my desk and uh, pictures in particular uh, that are inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the student athlete is surprised. When, when all of a sudden I'm, I have pictures uh, <laughs> that uh, been, that were came my way by way be, by the way of the fact that nothing is private. But and what here's the other part that cracks me up because we as older guys don't necessarily know this, but I do. But I'm just trying to be a little facetious here. <clears throat> At this point in society, every knucklehead high school kid, and I mean every one of them has a cell phone with a camera and or a video camera. Do you really think, if I, was, if I was in your shoes as an athletic director, my message would be simple to the kids. Just don't ever do anything wrong unless you're alone because somebody is taking a picture and somebody wants to post that picture. And even if you're not the focal point of that picture, you're sitting there in the background of a, of a photograph not knowing you're being photographed, not wanting to be photographed, but you got that little trademark red plastic solo cup in your hand. What is any teacher, AD, or coach going to think or infer, and by the way, act upon? Just, just stop being stupid. Yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 just, it's proliferated to the point where nothing is private on or off of the Internet, much less when you got a Facebook or a Twitter account. <clears throat> now, I, just, I did get an email from, uh, from Marty and Trumbull, and I wanted to, to get to this one. Um, I remind you, the studio lines are open at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. But I'll get to a couple of emails here. Marty from Trumbull writes in and says, Hey, Coach Tony, kids, including myself at the time, have done and said some stupid things when given the chance. It's part of life's learning activities. Hopefully, we slash they have learned from them. True, now it's a little more global and instantaneous with long-term ramifications, but that is a fact that they need to accept. But hey, if adults aren't learning the ramifications, and many aren't, uh, can we think the kids have a better grasp? It's what's done after the mistake that might be looked at. But since everyone has different levels of forgiveness, acceptance, and understanding, then it's never going to be easy. So if a school sets an Internet policy, like we have at Trumbull High School, or a bullying policy, keep, uh, keep your eyes on this one because it has huge reach, and the kid violates it, it's hard for anyone to say, that's okay, you get another chance. And as for, quote, look down the road before you decide to do something stupid, thank God some do that better than others. But check out the latest on that super heavy duty, uh, oh yeah, super heavy duty painkillers that NFLers uh, were taking. They were told it could cause kidney failure. They took it anyway. And now reports, uh, reports are of at least one in four, uh, four stage renal failure at 35. So stupid decisions, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or painkillers, they are what they are. Eric, I mean, uh, Marty, thank you for that email. Two things I want to touch in this email that he said. One, he says, since everyone has different levels of forgiveness, acceptance, understanding, it's never going to be easy. <clears throat> the other one was, if a school sets a policy and a kid violates it, it's hard for anyone to say, that's okay, you get another chance. That makes all the sense in the world, right? Yeah. Wrong, because guess what happened to Yuri Wright? Guess what happened when Michigan, and hats off to Michigan for pulling, pulling the scholarship and just saying we're drawing a line and we're going to stand to what we, what we believe in. Less than a week after this all happened, less than a week after the kid got expelled, um, he got another scholarship offer. <clears throat> Matter of fact, he's going to the University of Colorado. Less than a week later. And other schools like Notre Dame, and there's one other I'll get to that in a little bit, were still actively recruiting this kid. Now, Notre Dame, I, I don't want to sound like a total idiot. Is that a Catholic university? Yes, I think it is. If not, there's Irish Catholics running the hell all over the place. We know that. And they couldn't follow the example that some high school in New Jersey decided to set. So, you know what, Marty? Uh, you're right. You would think that there are certain levels of forgiveness that you shouldn't have to uh, 
shouldn't have to muddy the water. Should not be the gray area. But again, as long as we got wins and losses, you're going to have people who just don't care about what you said earlier, Eric, which is it's, we're not just we're not recruiting a kid because of his 40 time. We're recruiting him because of what he does and the type of person he is. Some people still just don't care. And the fact that Yuri Wright picked up another scholarship less than a week after he was expelled for inappropriate behavior shows me that this problem ain't going away anytime soon. Because what did Yuri Wright learn from this? I guess I didn't get to go to the school of my choice. So I'll get another full scholarship somewhere and hopefully play in the NFL someday. It, is, it, just, it just ain't happening. By the way, speaking of adults, and uh, you know what? I tell you what. We're going we're gonna to get to this <clears throat> when we uh, – we, i, I got to go to another quick break. Mm -hmm. When we get back, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how this affects the adults in this equation because if you think this is only about kids, you are dead wrong. But before we go to break, it's time for our Hey Coach Tony Team of the Week – which is being brought to you this week by our, uh, by our friends at P. Sam's Bar and Grill in Torrington, Connecticut, conveniently located at 1301 Torringford West Street. Call P. Sam's today at 860-618-3633. With live music every weekend, karaoke, trivia night, or any of their daily specials, there's always something special going on at P. Sam's where excellent food and service is the name of the game. P. Sam's would love to host your next special event in their banquet room, but remember, they also provide off-premise catering, so you can enjoy P. Sam's award-winning food wherever your party's being held. Now, this week, we highlight the girls' varsity basketball team from Wolka Tech High School. Coach Brian Herlock emailed me during the week and informed me that the girls went 11-4 in their regular season. They beat Terryville for the first time in the school's history and advanced onto the state tournament with a berth, also for the first time in the school's history. Now, What's important to note here is once burdened with a 265-game losing streak over 19 seasons, uh, it was finally ended in 2009. Well, guess what? Wolka Tech girls are now building some serious momentum, and they are certainly a force to be reckoned with in the Constitution State Conference. So congratulations, girls. Best of luck in, uh, in, in the state tournament. Congratulations to Coach Brian Herlock and, and the girls at Wolka Tech High School. Now, I want to remind you that the Hey Coach Tony Team of the Week has been brought to you by our friends at P. Sam's Bar and Grill. They're at 1301 Torringford West Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Call for your reservation today at 860-618-3633. And don't forget our, uh, our friends at P. Sam's. They're also the owners and operators of Chatterley's Restaurant in downtown New Hartford, Connecticut. So no matter what night of the week, there's always something special going on at P. Sam's and Chatterley's. And thanks again, guys, for sponsoring the girls' varsity basketball team from Wilka Tech High as our Hey Coach Tony Team of the Week. Now, if you want to nominate someone for athlete, coach, or team of the week, just drop me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Hey Coach Tony this fine Saturday morning, 9 a.m., every Saturday morning, 9 a.m., soon to be on CPTV Sports on the simulcast. So I uh, forgot to thank our friends at CPTV Sports for their support of the show. Talking this uh, this morning with uh, Coach Eric Swallow, the AD from Southington High School, and uh, we were talking about how the use of Facebook and Twitter is affecting the kids and how there are ramifications for the kids. Well, before the break, I alluded to the fact that if you think this only affects kids, uh, you are dead wrong. In fact, um, out on Long Island, Specifically, and I grew up on Long Island, there's a town called Island Trees where a coach recently lost his job over an incident involving social networking. Um, and, and, and at the, the January 25th school board meeting, dozens of student athletes, parents, and residents, uh, they wore light blue T-shirts in support of this guy. His name is Andy Schneider. He's the girls' varsity soccer and basketball coach uh, in question here. Schneider was reportedly fired due to comments that he posted on uh, social networking site, I think it was Facebook, uh, they were deemed inappropriate by the school board. Um, while the original Facebook post that led to his firing was deleted, several students and parents saw the comments before they were removed, and they, they firmly believe that they did not warrant such a severe punishment. Well, before we get to your calls and emails on this one, here's a little backdrop to the story, because it's not as simple as you would think. Um, when a local, I'm not going to say the name of the newspaper. If I slip, I apologize. But when a local Long Island newspaper released its list for the 2011 All Long Island Girls Soccer Team, Coach Snyder posted on Facebook that a standout player from his school, Island Trees High School, the Lady Dogs, uh, should have been added to the list because she had better stats than a player 
from an opposing team, Division Avenue School, who did make it. His argument was that this newspaper favored players from the Nassau Conference 1 when making uh, selections for their list because it's a more challenging conference, making it much tougher to rack up goals and assists over the course of a full season, which, by the way, I don't disagree with. You're going to make an all-state team. I think who you play against has a lot to do with it. Um, What's interesting here is that Schneider's argument, again, it appears to have some credibility. It turns out that only one of the 14 girls named to this list came from the Nassau Conference A2. However, real issue here, as far as I see it, Eric, and I want your opinion, is did this guy cross the line by comparing the stats of a player from his team to a girl from an opposing team, especially in a public forum like Facebook? Did he cross the line by doing that in and of itself? Yeah, I, I, he did. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I've addressed with my coaching staff is I do not want uh, them to have any uh, editorial or type comments that can be construed uh, as negative towards another, another school district. Uh, and or any any co- any content that be, can be construed in a negative light. So I do I do feel that uh, you're crossing the line in that re- that respect. I don't disagree. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna express publicly an, an editorial opinion, as we say in, in journalism, about a kid on a different team, especially one that you compete with, you're, I think you're just begging for trouble. Now that in and of itself, I agree with you, was wrong, required some action to be taken. But you want to peel this one back one more layer? Check this out. I learned that Snyder's Facebook comments. We're only the latest incident in a heated crosstown, good old-fashioned crosstown soccer rivalry that boiled over into a war of words, online words be that, but online war, uh, war of words between Island Trees and the Division Avenue school students. This all happened after the schools were pitted up against each other in the Nassau County playoffs. About a month before the list was posted, Island Trees lost 3 to nothing to who? Division. Go figure. And this was in the quarterfinals of the Nassau Class A playoffs. And again, this resulted in several heated back and forth exchanges on Facebook between the players from both sides. And for those of you who, who hear us talk about online bullying, let me be really clear. <laughs> when it comes to sport, here's right. I, uh, the Mrs. K coach, somebody's going to call again. Let me just say this for what it's worth. Men are, I'll say it, superior to women when it comes to sports. That's not the point here. When it comes to online bullying, you girls kick our butts, and I mean severely. Girls are vicious, they are heartless, they are ruthless when it comes to emotional bashing, and any married guy listening to this show knows what I'm talking about. But Eric, i got to ask you, at this point, I'm wondering, you got kids on both sides back and forth on Facebook. At this point, I'm wondering if a coach or an administrator should indeed step in. Yeah, what do you, you think? Get, you got to pay attention to that because it, it uh, has a tendency, no matter what, to escalate. And uh, we, I pay attention to that. I, I try to have ongoing communication with my coaches, and uh, you know, I keep my ear to the ground, make sure that uh, you know, I even, even dialogue with other athletic directors through through the area, through through our league, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, we're monitoring those those type of things. I'm, you know, again, you can't be the internet police, but at the same time, you've got to pay attention. So that if something does does come your way, you gotta you gotta be able to react to it. Don't disagree. I think at this point somebody should have stepped in. While we're waiting for your calls at eight five five Hey Coach, it's eight five five four three nine two six two two. I want you to think about this. There's a two mile distance between the schools. Couple that with the fact that both teams were conference winners and shared a lot of mutual fa- uh, friends in and around the town. Certainly had to add fuel to this fire. What concerns me? Well, you know, at first I heard <clears throat> Coach Snyder stepped in. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this guy did what he should have done. But here's where it gets a little concerning. Schneider stepped in by talking online to the girls from the opposing team. (laughs) And so this guy decided, hey, this is not appropriate stuff. So he took it upon himself to engage with teenage girls online, but it was the other team. Now, what's funny is the Island Tree's parents think his involvement was perfectly okay. It was done in a fatherly, protective manner. Um... While, obviously, the division parents feel that it was out of line for him to uh, communicate with their athletes online because they'll just quote the obvious. Teachers should not ever, ever, ever communicate with students in an online manner other than 
putting a schedule up or something yeah, what like time that. Practices. What do you think about the coach engaging the other team's girls? Uh, that's again, the word is inappropriate. Uh, no, no, no. The word is really stupid. Well, that, 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 that <laughs> you're too. a school administrator, that, so you're going to say it right. I'd say that's just stupid. That, well, yeah, uh, that uh, poor judgment. But uh, <laughs> you're saying <laughs> it well. I got to give you credit. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, one thing I tell, you know, my coaches is that I do not want them friending uh, their student-athletes on Facebook. That's just, uh, you know, a career-limiting move. And I also I also say that, uh, you know, any communication with their student-athletes, their team, okay, what time practices, uh, this is when the bus is leaving, that kind of thing, I get it. But you should CC the athletic director. Oh, that's I a tell point. them that you should always CC a third party. And that's a practice that we've started to institute. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of, you know, I get a lot of, I know what's going on with, uh, you know, cheerleading and softball and football when they're eating their pregame meals and whatever. But at least I know what kind of communication is going on out there. And if nothing else, it creates a a, a digital paper trail for the coach because someone's going to take something the wrong way. Some kid, and I'm sure you didn't intend it for this. Absolutely. But here's the point. Let's assume a coach is squeaky clean and just, just starts emailing with the kids and does not copy the athletics director. Little Bobby is is concerned he's not getting playing time, so he decides to to pull a hey, you know we got a Sandusky on our hands, and uh, you know Coach Fiorino cornered me in the shower. Unless you've got some copy going on and some kind of a paper trail, you're leaving yourself wide open for things that could easily be squashed. And yeah. and like I said, I, mean, I think it's a special kind of stupid to engage the kids. In, in yeah. any way other, other than that, absolutely. much less the kids on the other team. I mean, I just, that, I just don't uh, get it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you have to constantly be, you know, reminding them. And I can tell you that I, I think that this has occurred now within the last three years. This whole – this has blown up. So a lot of coaches, young coaches out there who have come out of college <clears> – <throat> have grown up with MySpace, have grown up with Facebook, yep. have grown up with instant communication. They, there's a learning curve, you know, because now they come into a, a setting where they've gone through their college, they've gotten their degree, they want to get into coaching. Well, they have to understand that, you know, it's a whole different realm, that whole player-coach relationship. And uh, that's something that I work with a lot of my younger coaches on. And, and let, going back to when, when I played, you know, there, there were coaches, and we did an entire show on this, there are coaches that are more interested in being the, the player's buddy, these younger coaches, rather than being <clears throat> their coach. Yeah. Yep. And not only do the kids need that discipline, it just it's a protective thing that you have to do you know, f- for yourself. Now, we have to go to a quick break here, but before I do, I want, I want to just remind everybody, because you said something that is so worth restating. Any email correspondence, and I think it's what goes to the parents, what goes to the coaches. If you're ordering lunch online, I would copy the athletic director on every single email that goes out. Is it a pain in the butt for the AD? Sure. But you know what? Especially here in the state of Connecticut, you guys all have administrative assistants. Let them scrub your email. And I'll go a little further and make a suggestion. If you have an email list for your teams, just add the AD to the list. Don't forget about whether or not you're remembered to, to CC the AD. And that's what put it, them on that's the list. Happens, yeah. yeah, put them on the list because, you guys, you never know when you're going to need to point back to an email. And maybe you deleted it, but the AD didn't or vice versa. But, man, you, you guys got to keep – it's sad to say, but yes, as ADs, as coaches, even as parents, you guys got to keep some kind of a paper trail when it, when it comes down to communication between the parents, the coaches, and the kids. Because how many times have we talked about a topic on this show, and it comes down to a he said, she said, and the way the story sounds when it begins is very different than the, the way it comes out in the end. And, and you know, sometimes it's the difference between saving an email or not saving an email. Coach said this, you know, the kid Baruto in Florida. I don't want to beat that one to death again, but by the way, Florida tryouts are coming up again. <laughs> Baruto is the kid who got cut. He claims the coach told him it's because he had no legs. He had prosthetic legs. All it would have taken is one email or one tape phone call or whatever it is, and that's an open and shut case. Never happened, and so it was a debacle. But, you know, we'll see what happens at uh, Dr. Phillips High School when the tryouts come up in a couple of weeks. All right, listen, we'll be back in a bit. We're talking more with Eric Swallow about uh, social network and the impact it has on high school sports. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, folks. Welcome back to Hey, Coach Tony. I'm your host, Tony Fiorino, and uh, I'm joined in studio this week by Eric Swallow, the athletics director from Southington High School. We're having a terrific discussion here on social networking and the impact it's having on the kids and the coaches. I've been hogging Eric for most of the show. I will get to some of the calls here. In fact, uh, I understand that we've got Rich on line one. So we're going to go to Rich. Hey, Rich, you're on Hey, Coach Tony. How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Love the show, guys. Thanks. Thanks. So what, uh, what do you got for me? 
Nothing. I'm listening. I'm I'm listening to a lot of the show, and um, I agree with everything you're saying about social networking can be a dangerous thing. I'm just trying to uh, just you know it's so hard to draw the line. What do you guys What do you guys think are some of the positive things that can come of social networking in sports? You want to answer that one, Eric? Especially high school sports, yeah, where think, it's something we really don't have any control over. I think there is a lot of positive in terms of uh, exposure, positive exposure in terms of the, the level of your program, the, the success of your program, like identifying a team of the week, that kind of thing. Also, from you know a recruiting perspective, it gives uh, schools access to information that they nor- might not normally have. So I think that in order to promote your program, promote your student-athletes, there could be – a real positive to it, but the, what we've been really discussing is, you know, a lot of the the uh, inappropriate use. But there there can be some positives, and we we're talking about a lot of schools or a lot of programs or teams that I have have their own websites, or and uh, basically uh, they're able to promote their program. I have a website. I could promote the general athletic program, but you ha- really have to be careful of what type of uh, information you're putting on those sites. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I, so, I was thinking about the the, the whole Facebook. Uh, thing and uh, with sports is you know you don't have any control over what kids are doing out there. Ah, uh, but you know what? It, it, it's Rich, it's hang a on room a second. for friendly competition on Facebook between athletes. And yeah, the, you, you, you know, emails always seem to get misconstrued because you can never tell the real intent behind an email, and then you could open up a whole can of worms. You are absolutely right. The real issue with anything that is online, whether it's email, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you, you, me, no one is smart enough to infer emotion or sarcasm or anything from the written word, and that's one of the problems. Mm. So there are potentially huge benefits, and I'll make a suggestion because if you think there is some positives, my initial knee-jerk reaction, or I should say jerk reaction because I'm a bit of a jerk when you said what good comes out of social networking my short answer was going to be nothing but it, but you know what eric brought up some very good points here's a suggestion for you as the coach because i like to believe i believe in in in, in justice and and discipline at the lowest levels first if i'm a coach and my kids want to tweet or post stuff on facebook or we want to have a facebook page i have a simple rule anything that gets posted to your twitter account or our Facebook page that is even remotely sports related, I have to see first, and then you eliminate the I problems agree. because you will stop. There will be no more taunting of other teams. There will be no more rubbing it in the face of another team. There will be no more "you guys suck." We should have beat you. Can't wait to see you next week and building up this emotional threshold. Those things will go away. Is it a horrible, tedious administrative nightmare for coaches and ads? Yeah, but if you want to reap the rewards of the social aspect of social media, there comes responsibility with it. Now, I will still hold to this, Rich. Do I think the bad far outweighs the good in the current state of social networking? Absolutely. So if I had to say there was a hard, fast rule, I would just tell my kids, do not tweet and do not post on Facebook regarding sports. And if you do something on your personal site that I don't like, there are still ramifications. But does that, does that, does that answer your question, or do you have something else you want to add to that, Rich? No, that definitely answers my question. Question for Eric. Are you guys over that whole baseball controversy from the spring yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, missing that home plate. But uh, that was a tough one. But, you know, again, I think we handled that pretty well. My, my coach... Uh, I talked him off the ledge, but uh, he he uh, he he was a class act, and I think we really try to rise above that. Uh, typical difficult situation for that student athlete, and uh, again, difficult situation for that umpire. Uh, he felt he did what was right, so again, abiding by what the, the CIAC. No, I, I heard that. Uh, yeah, coach told me gotta, the story. You got to follow. You got to. You got to follow the parameters. Coach so told me the tough. story during the break. What happened was. Um, Southington was in. Was it the state championship game? It was a state class double L state championship. State game. championship game. Kid comes up. One of your kids who got drafted by the Reds, I believe, yeah. um, hits a shot down the line. Winning. Basically, the winning run scores. Walk right. off in walk off fashion. fashion. Um, We're the home team. The kid apparently missed home plate by like a fraction of an inch. And some will still say based on photos that he touched it. The point <laughs> is on a walk off. The umpire banged the kid out, and they lost the state championship in extra innings extra, because of that play. To like three or four so if you're an umpire and you're listening, and, it, <laughs> and if our buddy uh, uh, umpire Steve, is list, Steve Coles from last week is listening, if you're ever questioning whether you ever bang someone out for missing home plate on a walk-off, you just don't. 
End of story. You want to count? You want to call me? Eight five five eight. Hey, coach, and I'll shred you some more. Rich, I'm glad you liked the show. Thanks for the call, buddy. Um, no problem. And you guys can, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, talk about too. Was there any social networking ramifications after that play? Because I'm sure. Yes, there. Was. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, you tell yes, the story. Uh, yes, there was. Uh, <laughs> and I had several conversations with uh, the uh, Newington administration relevant to what was happening. Um, so no, now you got to tell us. I mean, we got we got some time left. What happened? The Newington kids were rubbing it in. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's exactly what happened, and uh, it, it was really unfortunate because if you think about it, a six, seventeen-year-old kid, you know, being in that kind of position and then having to be, it's like the same thing that happened to the San Francisco 49er game. The guy receiving death threats relevant to dropping the ball. Yeah, but he deserve he deserved those. <laughs> high school well, kid, Patriot fan. <laughs> But a high the, school the, kid. But, yeah, the high, but you know, in that in that context, uh, you know, again, you can't you can't control it, but you got to at least make the other school aware of what's going on out there. But yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, we're uh, I, I believe strongly in what we're trying to do at where I am in Southington, and uh, we ro- we rose above it. By the way, if you're if you're, for our friends listening in Newington, if if you are listening, if you took any pride in a, in a win that resulted from some horse garbage call at home play for a kid missing the plate. If you even take pride in that win, I was going to say go kill yourself, but you know what, then the whole new Canaan thing comes back. The point is, you can't even take pride in that win, much less take an arrogant track and, and egg on the kids that you beat because of some garbage call at the plate. Don't take any pride in that. And by the way, Southington... You know, <laughs> to quote <laughs> Will Farrell, you stay classy, Southern, because it seems like your kids <laughs> did the right thing there, and I, and I do appreciate that. We tried. Um, all right. Well, you know, by the way, we started talking about this whole uh, this whole island trees thing. Um, let me ask you one thing: if if it's wrong for a coach to step in, and we're going to wrap up on this point. If you have a call, try to get it in. But if it's wrong for a coach to step in. Should it then be the parents' responsibility to put an end to it, or should trash talking online just be something that we chalk up to kids being kids? I yeah, got to tell you, I do not want a coach, and, and I've had situations where parents have tried to confront uh, student athletes. Uh, that's inappropriate. You need to really work within the parameters of, of, of uh, your your administration. You know, you have contact with other schools. You have mm-hmm. contact with other athletic directors. It's a tight knit community. Uh, we meet monthly as as uh, within the framework of our league, the CCC. You have 32 schools in that league, and we meet and we discuss and we talk about things that you know might be happening with their program mm-hmm. and in our program. So I really believe strongly that it's not the coach's place, nor is it the parents' place. They need to focus and work with the school because if you don't, it just escalates and be- becomes even. A bigger problem. I I agree because you're taking the same track as coach addressing other kids. When I say it, I look at oh, whenever I look at something from a parent perspective, I look at it in a very insular fashion first. What I'm saying is, if my kid is involved in some of this online back and forth, what I'm saying is, as dad, take my coach Tony hat off. As a dad, don't you feel you have some? I mean, I my kids ask, they get upset when I talk about. Uh, something I see them post on Facebook or something on their phone, and they say, well, "Dad, that's you know that's my stuff." No, it's not. Yeah. It is not. And so what I'm saying is, as if, if no one else is doing anything, where both where the Island Trees and the Division Avenue uh, parents failed was not just policing your own kid. Because well, if my exactly son's involved it. and no one else is doing it, I'm going to say TJ, Sophia, Nikki, whoever the hell you are, that's going to stop right now. And I don't care what somebody else says. I personally, I was, the, and I said this on the show, I was the biggest jerk to ever play. Youth sports and scholastic sports and collegiate sports. I was the jerk. I was the guy you hated to play against, but you liked me on your team. The, the, the point is I would get strongly motivated when other people would start to rag me, when people would try to put me down or, or make fun of my nose or something like that. It fired me up to play better. So I try to teach my kids when you're nervous, laugh. When you're angry, play better. And there's your outlet because the outlet of hit, you know hiding behind a keyboard and typing stuff about how some someone's mom works a street corner what that's not going to get any you're not going to feel any better you may chuckle a little bit but that's when something's going to happen like in baseball that's when you're going to get a pitch stuck in your ear when in football that's when you're going to get chop blocked by somebody in girls volleyball you're going to get shredded for what clothes you wore to school last week but the, and wow that sounded really really sexist didn't it the point is. You know, there's a responsibility and there's a, a responsibility chain of command. Guys like you who are the ADs, you guys have the ultimate say-so in what happens, how it happens, why it happens, when it happens. But I think as parents, we can't lose sight of the fact that ultimately 
You know, you have it in an upward chain of command, but where the rubber meets the road is how mom and dad handle their relationship with their young athlete as a kid, as a student, and as an athlete. It's called good parenting, and uh, that's where it should start. I mean, I, I can tell you I have four children, and they're all more computer savvy, internet savvy, Facebook savvy than I will ever be or ever want to be. Uh, but, you know, I have to pay attention to what, what goes on, you know, with, even with, within my own home. And if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my job as a parent. <laughs> well, I want to thank uh, Eric Swallow for joining us on the show this week. You were terrific. You are welcome back anytime. Thank you, Tony. Um, guys, remember, every, every Saturday, 9 a.m., you're listening to Hey Coach. Tony, I appreciate your time and the phone calls and the emails. Keep them coming. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hey.